Hi, so in this video, we're going to talk about gene families and how it relates to understanding receptor tyrosine kinases and the role that they play in human cancers. So gene families is actually a concept from genetics and you hopefully maybe remember this from genetics. I'll give you sort of a one um, slide overview, reminder, review of gene families. And then we'll talk about how gene families applies to understanding receptor tyrosine kinases, which play a huge role in human cancers. So, um, you know, genes have the instructions to make proteins. We know that. Um, okay, that's pretty easy. And usually you have two copies of every gene if we're talking about a diploid organism and a gene found on a autosome, not a sex chromosome. So two copies of a gene, um, one maternal, one paternal, genes make proteins, that's great. Now, uh, in the evolution of organisms, uh, where do genes come from? Where do new genes come from? Uh, gene duplication events. So uh, you might be thinking here, oh, he's talking about cancer and amplification. No, not talking about that. We're talking about the evolution of organisms whereby a new gene is uh, created from a duplication event or a transposition event where one gene uh, is accidentally duplicated onto another chromosome, for example, uh, yielding uh, sort of a new gene. So um, this happens normally in the evolution of organisms. And again, we're talking here about not mutation in a somatic cell, one of the body cells, but we're talking about a mutation event that occurs in the cells that give rise to organisms. So we're talking about these, this kind of duplication event in a gamete, right? In the cells that give rise to eggs and sperm. So this duplication event changes the linea, changes the organism's evolution. So what I've shown you here is a gene duplication event that now has given the organisms and their offspring uh, a second version of this gene. So um, what is that second version going to do? Well, it's gonna make that protein. We already know it. that gene makes that protein and there it is, <clears throat> exactly the same. Now let's say in the evolution of this organism, mutations accumulate in that other version. <clears throat> now again, you might be thinking, oh, he's talking about mutations in cancer. No, we're talking about mutations in, again, those cells that give rise to the gametes, so egg and sperm. So these changes in this gene are helping evolve the gene in the organism. So now all descendants of this organism now have this version of the gene that's slightly different than the original version. So that version is gonna make a slightly different protein that is similar, but not identical to the previous version. So it makes a similar protein, but it could be different in a wide variety of ways. It could be different in its activity because it's folded differently. It could be different in its expression because let's say there are changes in the DNA uh, in the promoter region that control the expression of this protein, this gene. So maybe it's not expressed in one cell type, it's expressed in a different cell type. Uh, and so maybe it has now a different function. So this is an example of how gene families are created. So we had an original version of this gene, and now we have a different version of this gene. It's similar, but not identical. So in this gene family, there are two versions of the gene, gene one and gene two, right? These are not, uh, these are not alleles we're talking about. We're talking about a completely different version of the gene uh, that has its own alleles. Um, and so this creates a gene family. So this is a review of a concept that you maybe covered in genetics. Let's see real examples of gene families in receptor tyrosine kinases. So in a previous video, we talked about growth factors and growth factor receptors and how growth factors bind growth factor receptors. And when they bind, they cause these receptors, let me move out of the way, to dimerize and transphosphorylate. And typically this growth factor signaling is going to get cells to um, undergo the cell cycle to make more cells. That's what growth factors do. Growth factors bind growth factor receptors, send a signal into the cell and tell the cell to go through uh, the cell cycle and make more cells. All right, that's what we covered in a basic video on growth factor receptors before. So these are proteins, right? The growth PDGF, it's a protein. PDGFR, the receptor, it's a protein. There must be genes that code for these proteins. That is true. So that was a simplistic version I gave you. Uh, now I'm going to tell you that it's a little more complicated than that. 
So the PDGF receptor protein, they're actually two, uh, they're actually gene families of that. So what does that mean? That means there's a PDGFR alpha gene and a PDGFR beta gene. So these genes are similar, but not identical. Um, they produce proteins that act as growth factor receptors. They have ligand binding, they have kinase domains, and they um, will participate in signaling inside the cell. So again, um, these are not alleles. They're not different versions of the gene. They're whole separate genes. So the PDGF receptor alpha gene is on chromosome four. You have two copies of that, uh, maternal and paternal. Uh, the PDGF receptor beta gene is on chromosome five. And again, you have two copies of that, maternal and paternal. So this is the PDGFR family, right? There are two different versions of the gene. They're slightly different. Um, we'll talk about what they do in the next slide. So in the previous videos, when I talked about just the PDGF receptor, I wasn't telling you that there are different versions of the receptor from different gene fam families. The same thing goes with the growth factor. I just said there is a growth factor called PDGF that is stored in platelets and released upon tissue damage. Um, turns out there are different versions of PDGF. There are four different versions, right? And again, these are whole separate genes that have duplicated over the course of animal uh, evolution and um, they all act as growth factors, but they're similar, but they are not identical. So they have different names, A, B, C, and D. All right, so why are we learning this? Well, what's the big deal about this? Well, uh, this will help us understand when scientists are talking about growth factor receptors or receptor tyrosine kinases, um, that when they function, we talked about growth factor, binding growth factor receptor, and receptors dimerizing and then transphosphorylating the tyrosines in the tail. So now we have different versions of the receptor. We have alpha and beta. So are they gonna work the same as what we said before? And before in generalities, we just said that they form dimers. Well, now here we have a PDGFR receptor alpha and a receptor beta. Beta. Will they dimerize? They will dimerize, in fact, they will. When they bind growth factor, they will form dimers. But now we get to introduce a new term when discussing how receptor tyrosine kinases work, uh, we, induce, uh, we can uh, recognize this term heterodimer, right? So these proteins, they're not identical to one another, they're a little different, so heterodimer. These are different proteins that bind together to form a dimer. Um, when we were talking before, uh, it turns out, uh, I was just saying, telling you proteins dimerize. If the proteins are identical to one another, let's say the PDGFR alpha, uh, receptor um, binds ligand and dimerizes with itself with another version of the alpha with the other version which is an alpha version those would be homodimers and same thing with the beta if the PDGFR receptor beta protein dimerizes with another beta that would be a homodimer same protein so I'm introducing these terms to you because as you read in the scientific literature, you will see references to different versions of growth factor receptors and growth factors. Um, and you'll see these terms, not just dimerization, but homo or heterodimers. So you need to understand what those terms mean. Um, here is a uh, figure from a paper, and I put a reference down here, that shows exactly what I've been talking about. So uh, in this cartoon here, they have drawn the PDGF receptor alpha protein in yellow and the PDGFR beta protein in um, red. And you can see here now terms when you're reading papers and you're trying to understand how these receptors work. Now you can understand what these terms mean, homodimer and heterodimer. They're just the PDGF receptor, and they dimerize when they bind ligand, and they're gonna do that thing that receptors do, which is um, their kinase domains become active, because these are all receptor tyrosine kinases. And when they become active, those tyrosines in the tails become phosphorylated by transphosphorylation. So in previous videos, we didn't talk about homo and heterodimers, but now we can. So. For this example, for PDGF receptor, um, the homodimers will transphosphorylate, right? So the alpha will phosphorylate another alpha, beta will phosphorylate another beta. And for this one, 
the heterodimers will change phosphorylated. The alpha will phosphorylate a beta. The beta will phosphorylate an alpha. So um, these receptors work just like we said before. And now we're just giving it a little more complexity because that's how complex it actually is. Um, you'll notice here with the ligands, now it's saying that there's an A and a B and a C and a D ligand, and different ligands bind to different combinations of receptor. And that is very true for many of the growth factor receptors that we're going to talk about in the future, whether it be the FGF receptor or the EGF receptor. It turns out that ligands evolve as well. So there are different versions of the ligand. Do you have to memorize all of these things? No, nobody's going to make you memorize which ligand goes which, which, which combination of dimers. The idea of this video is just to get you to understand that there might be different versions of ligands and different versions of the receptor. So, um, why do we have, why do, so why do we have different versions of the ligand and different versions of the receptor? Well, we've evolved these different versions so that our organisms can be much more complex. Um, they allow us to be more complex in physiology, in uh, organs and organ systems. So, for example, PDGF not only just plays a role in wound repair, but plays a role in embryonic development and cell migration and has other roles as well. So. Uh, the ligands uh, could be produced at a variety of different times through embryonic development and, and normal functioning of the organism. And the receptors can also reproduce on different cell types uh, as well. Um, and that allows for more complexity for the organism. So again, you don't have to know all the ligands and all the receptors and when they're expressed, unless you are super interested in one family of receptor signaling. Um, the whole point of this is to understand and you know be familiar with uh, the fact that there are different versions of the ligands, different versions of the receptor, um, and that you might see them talked about in scientific literature. Let's talk about another example. Um, the FGF receptor, fibroblast growth factor receptor. So it's present on the surface of, on the surface of fibroblasts and the fibroblast growth factor will bind to it right, and cause dimerization and transphosphorylation and signaling the cell to go through the cell cycle to make more fibroblasts. So that was the simple version, right? The more complex version is that there are multiple members of the FGFR family. So through the course of a, an animal evolution, this gene, FGFR gene, was duplicated and duplicated again and duplicated again. And those versions were able to evolve as well. They were able to mutate and evolve so that there are four different versions of this gene that are similar, but not identical, so that they might be expressed at different levels, expressed in different cells, expressed at different times, signal a little bit differently. Um, again, the goal of this is not to uh, go down the path of, well, what do all these receptors do and what are their dimer combinations? No, just to introduce you to the fact that um, you're going to, when you're reading about growth factor receptors, they're good, you'll be reading about different versions of them, one, two, three, or four, and that they might be forming homodimers or heterodimers. So in general, they all function more or less the same. They more or less bind growth factor, they form dimers, they transphosphorylate. And so this video is just to help get you familiar and introduce you to the fact that you might have different versions of our, of our receptor because the receptor family is large, right? Same thing with the growth factor. FGF, we said it's just a fibroblast growth factor. Well, it turns out there are 15 different members of this family. That means there are 15 different proteins that look and act like FGF. They bind these receptors and they cause transphosphorylation, dimerization, transphosphorylation. Do all of them bind all receptors and all pairs? Again, that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to understand different molecules could bind the receptor. They might have slightly different names, but they, are, they work like ligands, binding receptors and causing dimerization. Um, so um, the point of this video was to um, give you more information about growth factors and growth factor receptors, also known as receptor tyrosine kinases, because in previous videos, we just talked about growth factor, binding receptors, causing dimerization and transphosphorylation. So it's a little more complicated than that because if you have different versions of the receptors, then you can in fact have homodimers or heterodimers. And you're gonna see that in reading papers, you're gonna see that in scientific literature. 
And also you're going to see the ligands are not as simple as EGF binding EGFR. There are multiple versions of EGF. There are multiple ligands for the EGF receptor that aren't necessarily called EGF. So, um, and EGF is actually one of the very important growth factor receptors that plays a role in cancer uh, signaling. Uh, if you recall, EGF, epidermal growth factor, uh, binds EGFR, epidermal growth factor receptor. This receptor is present on the surface of many epithelial cells. And hopefully you recall that most human cancers originate from epithelial cells. So that's what carcinomas are. And it turns out that many of these epithelial cells, their reason that they're going through the cell cycle uncontrollably is some member of their EGFR family might be mutated or there's abnormal signaling through the EGFR receptor family. So there are different versions of EGFR. So in a later video, we're gonna talk all about EGFR family because it's a very important family in human cancers. So uh, hopefully now you have a good appreciation for gene families and how they uh, play a role in making receptor tyrosine kinases a little more complicated, but hopefully now you can understand the heterodimers, homodimers, and the different ligands and why we have them.